Right, this is the Nosy Booktuber tag. Uh, I got tagged by Dane Reads, and thank you once again for the tag. Uh, there's a series of eight questions on here. Uh, Dane Reads, if you watch his original video, and I'll link to it down below, he went through these quite quickly and made a point of saying how he was going to try and go through things quicker to respect people's time. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's a worthy goal. I'm going to shoot for that. I, I, I've got a real tendency to ramble on. I, I ramble on probably more than any other booktuber I know. So uh, I'll try and get through this quickly. And I'll also try and get through this quickly because I don't really have interesting answers for any of these. So no point in spending a long time just essentially saying I don't have an interesting answer. I'll try and buzz through these quickly. Which, by the way, uh, you can take that as a disclaimer up front. I don't have any interesting answers for these, so if, if you want to skip this one, feel free and go, to, go ahead. Number one, how many books have you read this year? Oh boy, I'd be embarrassed to tell you. Uh, yeah, five, maybe. Uh, they are The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Uh, Teaching Young Learners um, by uh, Anna Maria Pinter, I believe. Uh, Bound for Glory, which I actually have right here, by Woody Guthrie. Uh, Sweden by Matthew Turner, which I have here. And Syllabus Design by David Noonan, which I have here. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit embarrassing for a booktuber, isn't it? Uh, I've always been a slow reader. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm of the opinion that you can be a slow reader and still enjoy books. Uh, so I usually take about a month to finish a book. Uh, I think my record is 2014 when I read about 41 books. Uh, so that's obviously slightly faster than a month. It's, I guess it averages out to like a little bit more than a week. And, and that was my best year ever. Uh, and that was obviously a year where I apparently had a lot of time to, to sit down and read. But yeah, uh, I've been very busy this year and uh, we had a daughter who was born in December. Now the first few weeks of her being born, I actually had loads of time to read because like uh, we were in the hospital waiting rooms all the time and she didn't do much, she was just sleeping all the time. So I actually read several books during those first few weeks just being in the hospital waiting rooms all the time and then... Uh, once we got her home and she started requiring a lot more attention, boy, my reading plummeted after that. Uh, and it, also I'm quite busy with work and everything like that. That being said, I spend way too much time on the internet. So there, there, is, some, there is some room for there for me to make more time to read and it's something I'll work on doing in the future. Uh, I've been keeping very busy with BookTube, but most of that has been going through and doing my old reviews from my blog in the past. It's a project that I started in December, um, uh, we're going back and, and making videos out of my old book reviews. So if the channel's been quite active this year, it's mostly been old reviews instead of new reviews. Okay, anyways, next question, favorite and least favorite. Right, uh, so um, Syllabus Design by David Noonan was quite boring, and I believe I said so in my video review of that. But uh, I figure books you read for professional development don't really count for this type of question, right? Uh, because of course it was boring. It, you know, the title is Syllabus Design, and it's a book you read for professional development. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to stick to the other books, uh, which is my favorite one, I think, was Sweden by Matthew Turner. Uh, and uh, I feel a little bit guilty saying this because the author is actually somebody I know, or know in the sense of corresponded with uh, via blog. Uh, we, he's, he's left a lot of comments on my blog, and then he sent me out this book. So it, it may seem like... Uh, I'm, I'm pandering a little bit by that response, but I think looking at the other things on here, Bound for Glory was quite good uh, as well, but uh, I, I don't know. It, it didn't really grab me that much. There, there were parts of this where he was describing his childhood where I wasn't quite sure what I was reading, or I guess it wasn't what I really expected from a Woody Guthrie book. 
Uh, whereas Sweden, uh, if you watch my review, I was critical of a number of things in this book, so I'm not pandering completely. But uh, I think overall, uh, it's it's admittedly a very small list, but I, I, I there were elements of this book I really enjoyed. Uh, least favorite is going to be A Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, with apologies, because I, uh, I, everyone else seems to love that book. It was just me that didn't like it, so sorry. Uh, and again, if you watch my review of it, uh, I go into all the reasons I don't like it. Uh, number f uh, three, do you have a favorite time and place that you like to read? Uh, well, my, yeah, my reading hasn't been much this year, obviously, as you can see, but uh, I guess in years that I've read well, or when I read at all, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person who loves reading in a coffee shop, which is not great, I know, because it's quite expensive to get all your reading done in coffee shops. You know, you've got to pay for the coffee and the sandwich, etc. Uh, but I've just, I've always found it too depressing to sit alone and read in my apartment. Uh, and I guess this goes back to the days where I was single. Uh, when I'm in my apartment, I feel like I need some noise around. So if I'm all alone in my apartment, I'll turn on the TV or I'll turn on YouTube. Uh, I just, I don't like the silence of reading. I, I like there to be some noise around. So if you're in a coffee shop, uh, you know, there are distractions, but I tend to tune out the hum quite well uh, and uh, just focus in on the book. And I, I, I like the occasional distraction. Uh, maybe it has something to do with my attention span, but I like looking up every now and again and seeing the new person who's coming to the coffee shop. Uh, I think, I don't know, it's a, it's a habit I'm not entirely proud of. And I think as a, as a side effect of that habit, I, I've gotten into the fact of feeling like I always have to eat when I'm reading something. Like, you know, if I think, oh, I'd really like to get a few chapters of that book read. And then I can, I, you know, immediately I think, hmm, and I'd quite like to have a donut while I was doing it. Uh, so it's, it's this weird thing now where I almost can't enjoy reading without eating something. I don't know. Uh, okay, next question is, uh, how many hours per day do you have the opportunity to read? Well, you caught me in a bad year for this one. Uh, the... Uh, uh, the answer is a lot of days I don't read at all. I think if I, I think I if I could make some time for this, and I probably could by by cutting out uh, time I waste on the internet. I could probably make an hour a day up, uh, and that's probably going to be my goal for the future. Uh, number five: Do you read only physical books or eBooks or audiobooks or a combination of all three? Uh, I've never really gotten into eBooks. Um, which is somewhat ironic considering how much time I waste on the computer just scrolling the internet in general. Um, but I always felt like if I'm going to sit down and like invest in a book, then I don't want to read it off a computer screen. It, it's, it makes my eyes tired. I'll, I'll get the physical copy. Um, and I've in Cambodia and Vietnam, where I've been living for the past eight years, uh, the printing shops are very cheap. So I've, I've gone, you know, I've found stuff on Project Gutenberg and I've copied it onto a Microsoft Word document and I've brought it over on USB to the printing shops and I'll just have them print it off uh, and bound it in a, and put it together in a little book for me uh, rather than trying to read it off of the internet. Uh, audiobooks I have done a lot of in the past. Um, I think what I'm going to go do, do going forward is go borrow a page from Dane Reads, who only does audiobooks for books he's rereading. Because I've discovered over the years that sometimes I can miss things in an audiobook. I mean, not all the time. Uh, sometimes I feel like I absorb it quite well, but sometimes I can miss things. So I think in the future I'll only use it for rereads. Okay, next. What is your main pet peeve uh, when trying to read? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, obviously I don't like it when people distract me, but that's just a part of life. Uh, and actually, I take that back to a certain, at a certain point I do like it when people distract me. Uh, I, I've, 
I've never really been able to just kind of sit and read for hours without distractions anyways. So if somebody says something to me, I, I kind of almost welcome the distraction. I, I guess my main pet peeve would just be my own shortcomings. Uh, sometimes the difficulty I have concentrating on the page and the fact that I'll get to the end of a paragraph and realize I haven't been paying attention and, and then I make myself go back and reread that paragraph. Um, which is no doubt part of the reason why I'm such a slow reader, uh, is, is this habit. But yeah, uh, s some of us just have trouble. I, I've, I've talked to a number of people, so I know that this is not just me. Other people have this problem. Uh, number seven, what is the strangest place you found yourself reading? So I actually have a reputation for reading in all sorts of strange places. And that's partly because after I read Stephen King's book, I don't know, you've I don't know if you've read it. This is Stephen King's book on writing. Uh, and in the book, Stephen King says, if you want to be a writer, you have to read all the time. And then Stephen King says, and if you want to read all the time, you just need to sneak reading in wherever you can because, you know, the average person doesn't have like eight hours a day to read. So Stephen King said, you know, but when you're when you're at the table, read, uh, and you know when you're waiting in line at the supermarket, you can read something. You can just kind of sneak in all these little mini reading sessions, and I really took that advice to heart. Uh, especially not so much anymore, I guess, but especially after I read that book, which was about a little over ten years ago now or so. Uh, I developed a reputation among my friends for always reading in strange places like, uh, you know, if I, if I was at the store and I had to wait five minutes when my friend went to the bathroom, I'd just read in the store. I just always had a book with me. That being said, I don't really have really any interesting stories. Like, I don't, I don't have any stories about reading a book upside down and, you know, in, the, in a barn or something like that. Uh, just stores, supermarket lines, uh, the occasionally with my old girlfriend when, when I had to wait for her to do shopping I would I would go into the stairwell of the store and read there or something like that but but nothing really exotic. Okay uh, number eight are you a critical reader or do you just read for enjoyment? Yeah I'm not quite sure what they mean by critical I, I guess they mean you 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 read some more difficult books as opposed to books that are purely for pleasure? Well, I, I definitely read stuff that's not for pleasure. Uh, professional development, syllabus design was not for pleasure. Uh, I, I try to read the classics, um, although I, I do have a confession to make that if I'm absolutely not enjoying it at all, I have a hard time making it through the book. Uh, Don Quixote is the, the latest one I got stuck on where I'm right in the middle of the book and I just can't bring myself to finish it. Um, generally speaking, I mean, uh, I, I'm of the opinion that not all classic books are boring. Uh, a lot of classic books are actually fun to read. In fact, I did a whole video before uh, on all the classic books I thought were actually fun to read in spite of the fact that they're classics. Uh, and, and so in, in that case, I'll get through them quite easily. Okay, so I did not keep this concise at all, did I? Uh, apologies for that. Um, actually, in the future, I'm not going to promise to try and be concise at the beginning of the videos. Uh, I'm just going to accept myself for who I am, and uh, every video will be a rambling video. Okay, uh, I'll finish here.